Hello everyone and happy new year. Today we are publishing the ISWOG uh, guideline on the third trimester of septic ultrasound. Um, ISWOG published the guideline on the first trimester ultrasound and on the second or the routine um, ultras uh, ultrasound scan in the second trimester, uh, but it did not have a dedicated guideline on the third trimester ultrasound. And in fact, most international guidelines do not have a dedicated guideline on the third trimester um, obstetric ultrasound. So in this uh, short video, I'm going to share with you maybe one section of this guideline. And I'd like to uh, thank all the co-authors who have contributed uh, to um, this uh, document. And I really hope that you find it useful to your practice. Um, I'd like really to you to move away from this concept that the uh, third trimester ultrasound is just a gross scan, and we use a checklist approach. And this is a checklist that we included in the guidelines from the viability to looking at the placenta, the fetal presentation, the biometry assessing the gross, the amniotic fluid volume, dopplers depending on uh, the uh, in indication and the fetal anatomy. And I'm gonna really focus on this section on the fetal anatomy. And um, this is the views that uh, you would uh, aim to achieve and they obviously would vary. So depending, for example, if the placenta, if the woman had a previous cesarean section, you might need to look at signs of a morbidly adherent uh, placenta. If we are going to plan a routine, third trimester of septic ultrasound, uh, what gestation age window should we uh, plan it for? And that would depend very much on the purpose of the ultrasound scan. Is it mainly to really look for gross abnormalities like small babies or large babies? Or is it actually because we're looking for um, uh, improving the detection or looking for abnormalities in the third trimester? Because it's a trade-off, the trade-off between the optimal visibility of the fetal anatomy, which tend to decline, be more difficult the later in the gestation, uh, and the optimal accuracy of the fetal gross assessment, which we know that the later the ultrasound scan in the third trimester, the more accurate um, it will be for um, detecting small baby or large baby. And I'm going to show you the evidence in a second. But if your focus is mainly about the gross abnormalities, in this case, you um, should plan the routine surgical ultrasound scan about 35 to 37 weeks. But if you want to look for anomalies, it will be earlier at 31 to 33 weeks. Um, why did I say that the later the ultrasound pregnancy, the more accurate it is to detect small gestation age or large gestation age? Well, if you look at this data, and this is the detection so using estimated fetal weight and detecting small gestational age, and you're comparing the performance at the 35 to 37 weeks a window, late in pregnancy, compared to the earlier, 31 to 34 weeks, and you see the area under the curve, which is a predictive accuracy, is higher later, 0 0.93 0, compared to 0 0.90. So that's for small vegetational age, and we seek similar performance for the large vegetational age. Again, if you use the estimated fetal weight, the later, the 35 37 weeks, the area under the curve of the predictive accuracy is better or higher compared to earlier in gestation. And therefore, in the guideline and document, we recommended or included that the timing of the third trimester ultrasound scan, it depends really. If you're looking at the gestation age window between 32 and 36 weeks, it depends on the, the, the individual maternal fetal characteristics. It depends on the risk profile. It depends also on the objective and, of course, the resources. Um, how to determine gestation age using ultrasound scan in the third trimester? Well, we know that the most accurate uh, dating um, method for dating the pregnancy is a crown rump lens in the first trimester. And that gives you, uh, with a, a range of about five days. And certainly, if the pregnancy is being dated in the first trimester, you should not redate the pregnancy. But if the woman present for the first time in the third trimester, in this case, you could calculate or determine the gestation age using the head circumference plus female lens or the head circumference alone if the female lens is not available. And certainly at the later in pregnancy, when the head is quite low in the pelvis, it's actually sometimes really difficult to get an um, accurate measurement of the head circumference or the vibrator diameter. But even if you do that, even if we're using the head circumference, it's still there's a variation of about 15 days around the mean at about 32 weeks. And therefore, certainly in my own practice as a neurologist, where I work, we tend to bring this patient back in about a couple of weeks because we want to make sure that we don't miss a baby that's cross-restricted. 
Um, I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna focus on sort of from this checklist about this uh, fetal anatomy. And um, if we talk about the fetal anomalies detected for the first time in the third trimester, it could be one of three things. Is it could be missed, we haven't seen it before, maybe difficult baby's position, maybe the mother is um, the, the high BMI, or actually the natural history of this condition would not be detectable earlier. Or perhaps if there is a viral or sort of there is an infection, fetal infection or vascular incident that led to um, an abnormality that's become obvious in the search trimester. So how common, the fetal anomalies detected in the search trimester, how common and what type of anomalies we would uh, expect to see? Um, well, uh, it's about four per thousand uh, of pregnancies will have fetal anomalies diagnosed in the third trimester. And the most common being urogenital. More than half of them are urogenital abnormalities. And CNA is about 15%, and heart abnormalities about 15%. In this um, screening study, where women had a routine uh, search on mass ultrasound scan between 35 and 37 weeks, the incidence of abnormalities is about 2%. But this 2% is divided into about 70% of them were abnormalities that were detected earlier, already in the first or second trimester. Quarter of them were detected for the first time in the third trimester, and about 7% detected for the first time postnatally, even. So there will be abnormalities that will not be detected, even if you do ultrasound throughout the pregnancy. I mean, you could argue what's the benefit of diagnosing fetal abnormalities in at that late gestation? Uh, well, there are there are multiple benefits, in, and that potentially lead to improving postnatal outcomes from selection of the timing and place of delivery. There will be some uh, abnormalities that need to be delivered in a to surgical center or a center with tertiary level facilities because the baby needs an immediate intervention or postnatal investigation, or even sometimes we have fetal intervention that could actually improve the outcome, like maybe the, the vein of gallon, or um, the, um, for example, putting a shunt. Um, and, and of course, obviously depends where you practice, there is obviously the option of um, uh, termination, late termination of the pregnancy. So if we're gonna do fetal anatomy in the third trimester, what should we? look at what which organs and what um, aspects of the fetal anatomy that we should look at. Well, if you get, go systematically, so from the head, you obviously see the size and the shape because uh, my carefully diagnosed when the head circumference is below three standard deviation from the mean, and also looking at the shape of the head because uh, you uh, uh, could uh, claim you synesthosis, for example, which is often diagnosed in the third trimester. Uh, brain, you look at the symmetry of the hemispheres, the ventricles for the purpose of ventricular megaly, but also looking at the texture of the cortex and the parenchyma, um, because you're not really, you should not be expecting to see intracranial and echoic or hypochoic uh, areas at this stage. So looking, for example, of the smooth brain, listening carefully, or um, the polymicrogaria or the agaria or the structural lesions, for example. The heart is the same as what you would uh, expect in the second trimester, the situs, the size, the symmetry, four chamber view, the outflow track, the three vessel trachea view, um, the normal cardiothoracic circumference at this uh, gestation will be about 0.45, should not really exceed half of the size of the chest. It's common finding to have mild asymmetry of the ventricles with the right ventricle slightly larger than the left ventricle, or the pulmonary artery is slightly larger than the aorta. But again, it should, um, if it's significant uh, difference, that would uh, require fetal echo. The chest, you should look at the diaphragms uh, because about 20% of the congenital diaphragmatic hernia detected only in the third trimester. And also looking at the lung texture in the transverse view. The abdomen, you might find the abdominal cyst, you might find the ascites, you might look at the um, calcification uh, or bowel dilatation, which is not commonly seen in the third trimester. And not all of it is pathologic but the basal, most pathology is associated with small bowel dilatation more than 14 millimeter. And um, in many cases, it will be associated with polyhydramnias. Finally, the urinary systems, we need to demonstrate the normal appearance of the two kidneys and the bladder, because about more than half the cases of hydronephrosis detected in the third trimester. Um, how do you diagnose hydronephrosis in the third trimester? The cutoff for the anteroposterior diameter of the renal pelvis, it should be seven millimeter in the third trimester. 
And when you have severe hydronephrosis, define as an anthroposteal diameter of more than 15 millimeter. That's usually predictive of the need for postnatal surgery. And of course, once you have hydronephrosis, you look at the other uh, parts of the unit systems, including the ureters, the bladder, and you look at the bladder, you look at the size, you look at the thickness of the wall and the emptying. Um, and therefore, we recommended that the basic anatomy evaluation, the surgery master should include examination of the head, brain, the heart, the chest, the abdomen, and the urinary system. Finally, is routine third trimester obstetric ultrasounds can recommend it? And the answer is no. Um, and certainly there is, you know, the evidence is controversial, but at the moment there is no convincing evidence that routine universal third trimester ultrasound examination in a low risk population improves either perinatal or maternal outcome. So this guideline is not about recommending routine universal third trimester ultrasound scan or not, but if you would perform an ultrasound scan in a third trimester, what would be the checklist? What will be the things that you look, um, you look at? Um, so I'm gonna stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. I really hope that you enjoy um, uh, reading the, the article and find it useful for your practice.